Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the difference between potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate. Two things you might often hear about in the wine world and wonder why am I using these? And uh, are they good for my wine? Are they bad for my wine? What's the deal? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to follow up this video with an article on my website, smartwinemaking.com, so you can read in a little bit more detail there. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and get into it. Here's a packet that you might find in like a kit wine. You'll often have these kind of pre-measured out of potassium metabisulfite and a packet of potassium sorbate. And you always hear people say, oh no, I added the wrong packet. What, what do I do? And sometimes that can be pretty detrimental and sometimes it's not that big of a deal. But potassium metabisulfite, this is the one that you pretty much always have to use. Um, this would be your sulfites in wine. Uh, potassium metabisulfite acts as an antimicrobial. Uh, it also acts as an antioxidant for your wine. Two things that you kind of could have a lot of trouble with if you don't use potassium metabisulfite. Um, oftentimes, if you're getting fresh grapes from the vineyard, you'll hit them with a small dose of sulfite, so about um, 40 or 50 parts per million. And what this will do is it'll it'll kill any wild um, organisms that would otherwise try to ferment in your wine. So you have bad yeasts like Calecura. Um, you've got uh, a lot of like Acetobacter, which flat is on fruit flies. It makes um, some off flavors. You've got um, Brettanomyces, which is a beer yeast that can get in your wine. So by adding a little tiny bit of potassium metabisulfite, you kind of suppress those organisms and allow um, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the actual wine yeast, to really take a hold and ferment. Um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is actually pretty resistant to potassium metabisulfite. So that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So the reason that's a good thing is because it allows you to um, to suppress these other um, microbes without killing off all of your actual wine yeast and allowing that wine yeast to take a hold and get started. Um, it's also extremely competitive fermenter, so once it that wine yeast takes off, there's not much else that can really survive in that atmosphere with it producing so much CO2 um, it's producing a lot of alcohol. Not a lot of um, bacteria can survive in the alcohol that wine produces. So you just want to create a situation where you just don't have any other bacteria competing with that yeast until that yeast gets fired off and it's running like a train and can't be stopped. So that will be the first time you're going to use your potassium metabisulfite. Um, towards the end of fermentation, if you're going to do a malolactic fermentation, you're you're probably not going to add more sulfites at that point because malolactic bacteria is extremely um, sensitive to sulfites. Uh, after malolactic fermentation, moving into the aging period, you're going to want to do a hit of um, potassium metabisulfite somewhere around 50 to 75 parts per million just to kind of guide you through aging and um, make sure like that acetobacter that flies on the fruit flies doesn't try to turn your wine into vinegar. It doesn't try to create ethyl acetate, which is like an acetone nail polish remover smell. Um, doesn't try to create like sherry type smells. Uh, just to keep that wine healthy and um, kind of a reductive environment. So kind of the opposite of an oxidative environment. So extremely helpful. You'll kind of use it along the way you'll use it when you rack your wine if you don't use it you're probably going to make some pretty bad wine um, i will mention it's actually so sulfites are actually or so2 is actually naturally occurring so some yeasts like that lalvin ec118 that everybody uses that's a pretty high so2 producer and it'll produce up up to you know 75 or even 100 parts per million in the right circumstances of SO2. So you'll hear people say, oh, sulfites, they're so bad. Well, sulfites are naturally produced by the yeast. They're naturally occurring even in the wild. Um, they're used in dried fruits. They're used in food preservation. They're, they're pretty common. And if you're getting a headache from wine, 
it's really probably not from the sulfites. It's probably from any number of the compounds in wine or um, just the high alcohol. Um, the next thing, potassium sorbate. So this is, again, almost every wine kit has this. And I'll tell you the times you are going to want to use it and the times you aren't going to want to use it. Uh, what And actually what it does. So I mentioned that potassium metabisulfite, maybe it's not a good thing that it doesn't kill the yeast. Maybe it is a good thing. Well, a lot of people have the misconception that if you add sulfites, you're going to kill the yeast, and now you can sweeten that wine and move on with your day. Well, if that's what you do, you're probably going to end up with a lot of exploded bottles and just a big mess on your hands. So that's where potassium sorbate comes in handy, is if you do want to sweeten that wine or just leave residual sugar by doing something like cold crashing the wine and stopping that fermentation. Um, the potassium sorbate, it doesn't kill the yeast, which again is another misconception about potassium sorbate, but what it does is it, it inhibits that process of the yeast making little buds and splitting into more yeast and multiplying. So if you have a wine that's crystal clear and you added a little bit of sugar to it, and didn't add potassium sorbate, those few yeasts that are in there would slowly multiply and over this, over months you would have a situation where you're blowing corks off your bottles and you don't understand why it's happening. Um, but if you do add potassium sorbate, you're really pretty safe and shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, it's no, it is worth noting, make sure your wine is crystal clear because like I said, you're not killing the yeast, you're stopping it from multiplying. So if you already have a ton of yeast in that wine, it's still going to ferment when you add that sugar back to it. Um, another thing worth noting, so potassium sorbate kind of gets a bad name. And the reason being is a lot of people will say, oh, I don't use potassium sorbate because it makes my wine taste like geraniums or smell like geraniums. And that can happen. But the reason that can happen is if you allow that wine to go through malolactic fermentation after you've added potassium sorbate. So if you bottled a wine really early, um, you added some potassium sorbate because you sweetened it and you, and you didn't have a very high SO2, um, that wine could potentially go through malolactic fermentation in the bottle. Um, and if that happens, not only are you going to have carbonated bottles, uh, just from the CO2 that the malolactic uh, bacteria make, you're also going to have uh, this gross geranium smell in your wine. So the key to making sure that doesn't happen, um, it's not that you have to make sure your wine didn't already go through malolactic fermentation. It's more that you have to make sure that it doesn't go through it after you've added the potassium sorbate. So when you add potassium sorbate, always make sure that you also add a decent hit of um, SO2 in the form of potassium metabisulfite, which by the way is basically the same as Camden tablets. It's just, those are in tablet form. This is in um, powder form. So if you add say, you know, 50 parts per million of uh, potassium metabisulfite at the time of bottling and one quarter teaspoon per or sorry, one half teaspoon per gallon of um, potassium sorbate and you sweeten it, you really shouldn't have any trouble and you shouldn't have too much trouble sweetening that wine at home. Um, you'll find that most wineries don't use potassium sorbate and the reason they don't is because they have access to high quality sterile filtration systems. So at home you have these little home filters, you have your ones that say they're sterile, it's really, really hard to effectively perform a sterile filtration at home. Um, you can try, but you, I mean, you lose a lot of wine in the filtration process. It's messy. And you might find that you don't have bottles blowing corks and exploding, but you might not. So it's not like a guarantee that it's going to work versus when you have a plate filtration system at a winery with you know, 20 plates that this thing's going through, they can pretty effectively assure that um, it's a, it's got a low enough yeast count that it will never begin to re-ferment. Um, so like I said, 
I'm putting an article on my website, smartwinemaking.com, to kind of um, assist this because if you want to know a lot more about the difference between the two and how much you might want to use, you're going to want to check that out. Um, and also just make sure that you subscribe to my um, channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Uh, click the little bell if you want notifications. And if you have any comments or questions, um, just be sure to put them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.